columnist and Fox News contributor Charles Krauthammer with me now in Washington. Good morning, Charles. When you sit down to write your next column, if you pick this woman to talk about, if you pick this topic, what will your column say? Well, we've heard a lot about the great American story, and hers is a great American story. I might start the, the column with another American story, that is Frank Rickey. He's a fireman in New Haven who was uh, told there'd be exams for, his, uh, for promotions in, in his department. He bought $1,000 worth of books. He studied 8 to 11 hours a day, and he had to hire a reader because he's dyslexic in order to absorb all that information. Ricky uh, was one of the highest scorers on the exam and discovered that the city canceled the results of those exams and promoted no one because there were no African American uh, in the group that, uh, that got the top scores. They were all whites with, ironically, one Hispanic. Well, of course, he sued, and when the case came to Judge Sotomayor's court, she dismissed his case summarily without any argument. Uh, and that, I think, is going to be the core argument. Two American stories are colliding, her story and his story. The only difference about his story is that he was white. And that, I think, is going to be a central issue in, 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 her, uh, in her hearings. This particular case, which is about the clearest, most egregious case of race discrimination, in recent days, and I what think that? You, you've talked about it on the air, yeah. it will surely be overturned in, in the Supreme well, Court. What does that suggest to you about the way she interprets the law as it, as it pertains to either that particular case or uh, racial discrimination or affirmative action? That she's a believer in identity politics to the extreme. As we heard in the quote you mentioned about her speech at Berkeley, in which uh, she said, I would hope a white Latina woman would be more wise than a white male, uh, it tells her what her attitude is to race and gender and these are categories which have imposed to themselves. Now, if she's in the Congress, that's one thing, but her job on the court is to be an impartial adjudicator. And if she is not, if her empathy and her concern for certain ethnicities overrides uh, the idea of justice and equal justice, I think that is a troubling concern. Now, Trish Turner is our uh, Capitol Hill producer who is sending out a few ema emails now notifying, well, it's, it's been assumed that Democrats have the vote right now uh, to get her through, but bear in mind the Minnesota Senate race has not been decided. Uh, Norm Coleman still fighting that out with Al Franken, and we'll see eventually which way that goes or whether or not uh, Coleman's case is settled ultimately by the U.S. Supreme Court, ironically. The New York Times, meanwhile, is writing this this morning, Charles. It's been more than 40 years since a Democratic president appointed someone who truly excited the left. Does this woman do that? She will. Identity politics is uh, the, the mother's milk of the, uh, the Democratic left, uh, and they are going to love this nomination. Uh, I think it is a way of Obama appeasing his left. Remember, Bill, he's angered his left on a lot of issues regarding the war on terror, the way he turned about the face on the release of the torture of photos, the way he's reinstituted military commissions. So the left is pretty unhappy with him over his adoption of a lot of the Bush issues uh, in the war on terror. So I think this is a very easy way uh, and, and a very smart way politically for a president like him to appease his left. And the timing, as you mentioned earlier, of course, is, is quite obvious. He was reeling last week on the issues of uh, Guantanamo, on these war on terror issues. He was embarrassed yesterday by the nuclear test in North Korea. Uh, he wants all of that stuff off the front pages, and you can be sure they will be wiped away uh, tomorrow. So I think he's earned himself a reprieve in terms of the timing and coverage. And also, he's done a favor to his left that will last for 10 or 20 or 30 years. Mm. You mentioned this case out of Connecticut, and we will get back to that uh, throughout the coming weeks and months until uh, either the hearings begin or even during those hearings. Um, there's another word that Americans are going to hear a lot about, and that's empathy, because the president mentioned that word when uh, he goes to evaluate who he would nominate for the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, if, if you're sitting on that, that Senate panel, the Senate Judicial Panel, that, that will take up her case eventually, we believe, uh, what's the first question? How do you define empathy? How does it apply to the way you interpret law? What's your first question? 
my first question w would be, uh, outside of every courthouse in America, you've got, you've got a statue of justice wearing a blindfold. And that means that justice ought to be entirely um, blind and unconcerned about the actual identity of the parties in a case. Um, and empathy is what uh, is the opposite of that. Uh, it seems that to me uh, a contradiction of our idea of justice. Empathy is something I think you get expressed in the Congress and when you legislate and as a private citizen and how you deal with others and philanthropy and other issues. But when you are talking about a judge in a case, in all of human history and all societies, the idea is that you do not use the identity of the individual as a way of determining who wins and who loses. Otherwise, the, the, the poorer or the less fortunate of the uh, arguers in any case is the one who would be awarded a victory. And that's not how we do it. I think, look, there is no doubt that, that this uh, judge will be uh, confirmed. Uh, but I think it is an opportunity for conservatives to make a stand on principle and talk about how justice is not about empathy, it's about equal uh, treatment of people under the law and the Constitution. And secondly, how we, we do not judge our defendants on the basis of ethnicity or gender or race, and that's a core principle. It's the uh, overturning of the idea of uh, Martin Luther King of justice being about uh, uh, the content of a character and not about identity of race that we have lost in these past 50 years. I think this is a great opportunity for Republicans and conservatives who are not going to win this argument to make it in public and to have it as an issue on the table. Even though it will not uh, change the outcome, she will end up on the Supreme Court without a doubt. Charles, thank you. Charles Krauthammer with us from Pleasure. Washington. Look forward to hearing your article later in the week or reading it anyway. And look forward to seeing and hearing from you later tonight on Special Report with Brett Baer. Uh, the room starts.